Do you like a challenge? Click on the challenge button and subscribe to my free 30 day real estate investing video challenge. Every day I'll get you a new video, how I built my business doing eight to 10 deals per week. It's two and a half hours of hardcore training. Hey, this is Peter Vexelman. So today I wanna to talk about a topic that all of you come uh, in play with or in contact with consistently if you're uh, wholesaling deals. And it's something that I get constantly asked about and that is this. When you're wholesaling a deal, and let's say you're trying to do an assignment, at what level or what dollar amount is the assignment just too big for you put on a HUD for your buyers and your sellers to see? You know, people always get paranoid. Well, I don't want my buyer to know that I'm marking it up five or $10,000, or I don't want my sellers to know. So there's a couple of mitigating factors that go into that, make, to go into that decision. So let me, let me use actually a deal that we're right now closing actually, I think today. Um, where we're actually double closing, meaning we're not doing an assignment, we're using two close, we're, we're using two separate closings, we're utilizing two separate closings, so utilizing two separate HUDs. So here's the deal, uh, I'm actually buying it for $61,000 and selling it immediately for $92,000, okay? So that's a big, you know, it, it, that, that's a big spread right there, that's a, you know, 30 some thousand dollar spread. And in this case, we decided to go with a double closing. Now, internally, our rules here are pretty simple. We'll do an assignment, anything 15 or below, and anything 15 or above, we're going into a double closing. Now, some people even get worried about lower assignment fees, like you know, people all the time contact me like, gosh, Pete, I'm making $5,000, I don't wanna do an assignment on this one, I don't have the money uh, to do a double closing and all this. So a couple of things for you to consider. Number one, you have to make sure you're using very savvy closing attorneys or title companies, depending what state you're in. A good closing attorney, a good title company is able to kind of so-called hide these assignment fees. So what I always recommend is you always want your closing agents to put your assignment fee, no matter how big or how small, on the second part of the HUD towards the bottom of the HUD. Because really in the end, if you're a buyer, and especially if you're a seller, the real parts of the HUD you're looking for are the first page of the HUD. You know, here's my sales price, and here's what I'm making. You know, or here's my purchase price, and here's what I'm paying. Many times the second page, you know, it just kind of breaks up um, fees that are all summarized in the front page, that they can't even see it. So you have to have a good and a savvy closing agent, very important. A good and a savvy closing agent will also be able to explain the assignment fees and you know and kind of work through them in a very nonchalant manner you know the one thing I always recommend is you do not want to use a closing attorney or an agent that or, or a title company that just throws these assignment fees into into the buyers and sellers faces there's no need for that it's just part of the transaction it's everything we do is above board and it's very legit but again there's certain things that you want to showcase and certain things we don't that's that's one of them so the size of the assignment fee matters um, the closing agent matters very, mu very much. The placement of the assignment fee matters very much also. Now, here's the other issue that people come in, maybe on some of these larger uh, flips that you're doing, is that when you go into a double closing, most of the time you have to fund the front end transaction. So a couple things as a result of that. And a lot of times investors just don't have the money to fund, you know, here's a $60,000 that needs to be brought to this closing. A lot of uh, investors or maybe you yourself don't have the kind of money you need on the front end. Again, a couple things here. There's things called transactional funding and all you have to do is just Google for them. These are companies literally all over the United States that fund back-to-back -back closings. I'm actually a transactional funder myself. So I could do, I could fund anybody's A to B, B to C transaction um, as long as it's, uh, it's set up correctly. So transactional funding uh, uh, is, is one solution to having to bring money to closing. Number two, again, going back to having the right closing agent or the right title company, in a, tr in a cash transaction, when you're working with cash transactions, a good closing attorney should be able to use the B2C funds to funnel through to A to B. Now, if you have a mortgage involved on the B2C side, then that cannot be, 99% of the time, those funds cannot be used. So either use transactional funding when you need the money and you don't have the money, or if you're working with a cash transaction on the B2C side, a good closing attorney or a good title company should be able to just funnel that money all the way through 
one of the ways, one of the things we do when we work with our closing attorneys is that we make sure that our closing attorneys can funnel the B to C down to A. Now, in certain regards, um, the B to C people do not want their funds to be used because when this, when when these transactions are done the right way, you have to disclose that the B to C funds will be used for the A to B funds. Um, and usually it's just a document that the actual purchaser signs on the back end knowing their money has to be, uh, uh, will be used to funnel through. Again, some buyers, they don't want that to happen. No big deal, you know, obviously, you know, we have no problem funding these ourselves. And if that happens to you where they don't want those funds to be used, then you gotta go into a trans, uh, transactional mode. So, so, so those are the things that you wanna consider. Now, let's tell you something else that almost over, uh, you know, overshadows almost all of these things I've been talking about. And that is what we do here. And that is we always, always disclosing to everybody, our sellers, our buyers, exactly what's going on. See, in a transaction like this, even though we are using uh, a double closing just because the enormity uh, of, of this transaction in terms of the profit margin, but the bottom line is, guess what? Our seller here knows exactly what we're doing in this transaction. That we're actually not stepping in ourselves, but we're moving this property to a third party investor. So, so there's no surprise for them, even if we did have to go into a, an assignment. And guess what, our buyers, they know exactly what's going on too. So the ultimate way to make sure that you have security, that these transactions don't fall apart, always, always disclose to your sellers, to your buyers, exactly how the transactions are, uh, are structured. And that is the ultimate way to negate any kind of issues that can come up with closings when you're doing assignments. I hope that helps. Hey, you guys know what we do here. We do a ton of deals and, and I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I coach people just like you to help become very, very successful real estate investors. So if you're a buyer or you know other buyers literally all over the world that are looking for deals in the Georgia market, specifically concentrated towards Atlanta, you need to be on our buyers list. By now you'll see my email scrolling across the screen. Send me an email, just say add me to the buyers list. And on a daily basis, you're gonna get some terrific both ROI and equity driven deals uh, emailed right directly to you. The other thing, if you're looking to become a successful investor, whether you're brand new, just getting started, or whether you're doing it already and you're looking to be a, a bigger, more sophisticated, more savvy investor, I know I could help you do that. Again, you could either send me an email to learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, or better yet, right below this video, there's a link, coachingbypeter.com. You can go straight there and learn more about how I could help you become very successful in this industry.